guys, this is Kiro back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM but this is based on Android 12.1. Yes, the Evolution X ROM has already released two builds based on Android 13 which I'll be making a video on later but right now let me show you almost the final build you can say or maybe one of the final builds based on Android 12.1 and I'll be showing you how is the stability overall of this ROM and from the Evolution X website of course you can get it and here let me actually talk about the change logs you can read it out from right here there are not a huge amount of change logs but yes you can see some amount of change logs are there there is that lock screen blur transparent quick setting panel and stuff but yes the quick setting panel does not have the blur over here i have like enabled that but there is no blur there is only the transparency kind of thing for the quick setting panel but yes we have some like media artwork blur and stuff everywhere so yeah, let me talk about the overall experience and in the about section, this is how it looks like we are still getting the Evolution XS logo up top and we have the Easter egg of Android 12 L of course and this is how it looks like. Let me go back, the Evolution XS version shows as 6.7 EVE for a file official and the security patch is latest of August 5th, 2022 and the stock kernel here is the Soviet star kernel and here you can see this is the 17th August 2022 build. The build maintainer is of course Joe and here is the build number and the SNL series shows as enforcing. In the system settings we are still getting the system updated, you can check for updates and in the gestures we have all the back tap kind of gestures and you can set it to screenshot, access your digital assistant or play or pause music etc. And we have the quickly open camera and in the settings we have the gesture navigation settings and in the advanced gestures we got the extended swipe action and stuff if you want to enable those. Back gesture haptic is there, back gesture animation is there. Then we have the space under the keyboard customization. Then we have the left edge right edge customization. And of course swipe to invoke assistant is there. It should be working perfectly fine. Also there is that pill length and the pill radius customization and I have customized it to the fullest. That's why you are seeing this long and thick pill bar. We also got the two button and three button navigation still and one handed mode is working perfectly fine. We got the swipe rig screenshot that too is working fine. We have the share, edit, delete and the Google lens option. Even the capture mode option appears when there is a lot of scrolling space. Front camera settings is there. We can disable the sound effects if you want to or enable any kind of sound effects for the motorized front camera. But there is no calibration option as of right now. We are still getting the pixel launcher over here. No issues with that. We get the Google's discover page to the left side and swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel but this quick setting panel even the white theme or light theme stays dark if you are noticing that's how it is but the notification panel stays white in the like light theme and swiping up will get you to the app drawer you can search for any particular app and the widgets are working perfectly fine the animations are working fine also you can go into the widgets and search for this battery widget you can add it up if you want to and it will display your phone's battery and your bluetooth headset's battery together just like this so yeah this battery widget is available over here now if you're wondering how there is a anx camera over here well i have flashed magisk because i have seen some comments that the anx camera is not working on the latest build and stuff that's why i have flashed magisk over here and if you don't know how to actually flash this rom or flash anx camera on your redmi k20 pro you can check out the description for each video and with those videos you can definitely figure out how can we flash the rom or anx camera if you want individually and with that anx camera is working perfectly fine i would say almost and here just notice there is that beautify kind of mode and if you want to enable these you can there is a 2x zooming option or 2x lens is working fine and we have the 0.6x or ultra wide angle lens working super fine even we got the pro video and you can enable it with the anx camera pro app and of course you can go into the video section then shoot manual videos if you want to that too up to 4k 60 fps if you're noticing we have up to 4k 60 fps option of course you can shoot 1080p 60 fps too or 4k 30 fps if you want to so yes all these options are there you can shoot like manual 4k 60 fps videos with this particular settings even in the normal video section we have the 4k 30 fps 60 fps option and even in video you will get the beautify mode if you want to enable that also the portrait mode is working fine and if you're wondering about the front camera yes as you can see the front camera is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with that even in portrait mode even in mode settings there is the document night 48 megapixel mode etc and the vlog mode and stuff and yes taking a picture is pretty quick if you are noticing so yeah anx camera is working fine if you want to use that you can also the gcam is working fine this is the latest like the mgc gcam i'll list below in the description too you can install it if you want so yes there is like not a good stock camera by default here you will only get this old kind of google camera over here which does not look good but yes 
takes decent pictures i would say so in terms of camera this is still an amazing option talking about the quick setting panel yes the quick setting panel has a lot of quick toggles and you can edit and add multiple toggles whichever you want to add and let me show you i have added the wi-fi mobile data and the bluetooth toggle etc and there is no network signal because i don't have a sim card in the device all the other toggles are working fine there is an anti flicker or disabling all the fps info and stuff is appearing and as you can see right now it's running at 72 hertz so that's why you might see 70 fps over there and let me actually show you with the test UFO website and yes 72 hertz is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with that over here in this rom there is the battery saver the device control and the live display option is also where you can enable the outdoor brightness mode and we have the reboot toggle and stuff the always on display toggling option etc and let me go into the settings in the display settings and inside lock screen if you scroll down more we get the advanced settings from here you can enable this pickup option if you really use that let me actually show you if i double tap right now my always on display is disabled so if i just pick up the device on my hand as you can see the pickup gesture is working perfectly fine and it's showing this kind of animation of the ambient edge lighting and stuff and yes fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine and even like the screen of fod is working fine if you're noticing so even when the screen is off i just bring my finger and tap it on the screen as you can see it unlocks the screen of FOD is working fine and if you want to look at the always on display I can simply enable that and as you can see this is how the always on display looks like and yes you can get the nothing font and stuff everything in the customization settings no issues with that and even double tapping on the always on display wakes up the screen and as you can see this is how it looks like and yes the lock screen looks beautiful this clock and stuff looks beautiful and yes the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner experience is overall. So yeah, overall I do not have any complaints regarding the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks 100% of the time, super fast speed, no issues. Right now let me show you the face unlock and if I swipe up on the screen, it will like work with the face unlock and as you can see, the face unlock is working perfectly fine here, no problems whatsoever. It takes a little bit of more time because of the motorized front camera, but yes, the face unlock is working perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. And all the lock screen kind of animation and stuff is working fine with the power button as you are noticing. And here, let me talk about the app lock and for that, you just have to like tap on the app which is locked. As you can see, this is how the app locking window looks like. If you tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks the particular app without any problems. So yeah, the app lock functionality is working perfectly fine. No issues with that. Right now, let's talk about the battery settings. Yes, the battery setting still has the charging cycle and stuff and the design battery capacity, current battery capacity and the battery temperature also shows up. And on the top, you see the battery percentage and the battery usage and stuff. And the 24 hour battery usage is also there. There is the idle manager, the battery optimization, battery charge warning, everything is there. Also the smart charging is there, but I don't recommend using it. But the charging cycle actually shows zero for me. I don't know why. Maybe because I have replaced the battery. I have an original new battery over here. It could be because of that, but for me, the charging cycle is showing as zero cycle. I don't know how it will be with your device, but talking about the battery life, it has been decent, I would say. As you can see, I have been getting about six and a half hours of screen on time, that too with 72 hertz all day long. So yeah, with 72 hertz, the screen on time will be a little lower, like six to seven hours, I would say. It should be decent for one day of usage. And yes, fast charging is working perfectly fine, although the device gets a little hot while fast charging. I use a 33 watt fast charger. With that, it gets a little too hot, sometimes like 42, 43 degrees. But yeah, that's how it is. It charges super fast. It charges in a blink, I would say. So no issues with the fast charging at all. And here, if you're noticing, my battery health shows as 93% as I do have a new battery again. So yeah, it might be a lot lower for you if you have not replaced your battery. But yeah, for me, it's about 93%. I would say you can get seven hours of screen on time over here. That should not be a problem while daily driving. Talking about all the setting stuff, let me actually show you. There is that evolve bar. And of course, there is a huge amount of customization everywhere in the settings. And if you want to get the fonts and stuff, there is a lot of fonts like the nothing dot font, etc. And all these fonts, you can use the OnePlus Slate, One UI Sans. Every font is there in the planet almost. Pretty much you will get amazing amount of options and there is the icon packs like the Acura, Circular, etc. options are there. So you can go with any of them. And in terms of the battery icon and stuff, let me actually show you. You get plethora of battery icons like the icon portrait, landscape, portrait iOS and stuff. And the landscape R style A is the one that I'm using. And I am really liking this battery icon over here. Just notice how beautiful it looks. So yeah, you will get amazing amount of battery icons. Even you can use the big dotted kind of circle if you want to. But the colored battery icons, I don't know how to enable it. 
but yeah the colored battery icons i cannot really see the option for it as of right now but yes you can set the percentage next or inside the icon no problems so far with that and yes amazing amount of customizations are there there is a lock screen blur and stuff if you want to enable those i'm not going to show you everything but yes all the things are there and if you are into that google photos and stuff like the unlimited backup unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games charging animation and stuff is there and we have the game space too you can add any game that you would want and there's a file transfer mode too so of course you can use it for convenience whenever you're plugging in with your pc it will directly open the file manager or the internal storage on your pc so yeah all these functionalities are there and in terms of sound quality i haven't faced any issues let me actually show you i have connected this tws over here the 411 anc and this also supports the ac kind of audio ac and the qualcomm kind of audio is working perfectly fine i mean aptx hd audio and stuff if your headset supports that of course here it's supported and here we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and stuff the charging sound vibration and the me audio direct you will also get over here and you get plethora amount of options for the headphone preset i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality overall is amazing even with the headphone jack and the blue headsets no problem so far and even the speakers are working great and you can choose presets if you want to and we have the smart scene mode also we have the hi-fi audio option if you have a really great pair of wired headset you can definitely use that the touch vibration screenshot sound charging sound and vibration everything is there you should not worry about all those and in terms of the wallpaper and size i have been using a booster 7 wallpaper over here of the static fire so yeah this is working perfectly fine but yes you can go with the default wallpapers which are present over here also there is that wallp app and you will get the evolution access wallpaper with that rock theme option is there themed icons option is there the grid is up to 5 by 5 available and i have showed you guys the settings multiple times in the past so i'm not gonna do that and yes the safety net and stuff is passing right out of the box but yes i have installed magic even with that the safety net is passing as you can see so no issues with banking apps on this particular rom i haven't faced any issues with those in terms of the drm info you will get l1 certification so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any issues right now let me show you the recent panel and stuff and for that you just swipe up and hold and as you can see this is how the recent panel looks like and just notice the animation is working super fine and very smooth animation it gives and in the recent panel we have the screenshot the select option and all the way to the left if you go you can clear all the apps from right here or if you want to go into the split top mode you can definitely do that just like this and let me just do this and as you can see scrolling is working perfectly fine even with split top mode no problem so far you can go home with the split top feature and as you can see both of the apps stay together you can copy the links from right here if you want to all these functionalities are working fine and if you want to like guess about the performance here are the android and geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build so that you can get an idea how is the like gaming performance and stuff over here and yes high fps gaming is supported on this rom you should not worry about that so pretty much switching between apps is not a problem apps open really fast no issues whatsoever even in twitter let me actually show you once it loads so yeah scrolling in twitter is still a little glitchy on this device i don't know why even with 72 hertz but yes it works fine like it actually scrolls but yes there is that little bit of stutteriness everywhere while you are scrolling in twitter really fast but yes normal like slow scrolling is not a problem if you're noticing so it happens only when you scroll really fast i would say but yes it actually scrolls to the point where you have scrolled already so yeah that's how it is the performance overall is great with any other app no problems whatsoever with the app opening and closing i really love the performance still on the redmi k20 pro with the latest evolution x rom i feel the 17th august build 17th august 2022 build is one of the best so far that i have seen based on android 12 l at least let me in the comments what do you guys think about this latest android 12.1 based evolution x rom on the redmi k20 pro give this video a thumbs up if you like it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet share this video with your friends and yes i'll be making the android 13 evolution access video soon so do stay tuned for that so thanks for watching this video guys i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now Thank you.